now we're going to focus for a little while on nonlinear inequalities. Now, we know as far as inequalities go, and even when we were dealing with linear in inequalities, uh, we don't just have one solution or even just two solutions. We've got a range of solutions. And we're talking about a polynomial function. In this case, we're looking at a quadratic. And, but we still may have x-intercepts, in other words, where the graph is crossing the x-axis. And if we think about that x-axis as a number line, if you will, these zeros, where it crosses the x-axis, the x-intercepts, divide the number line, x-axis, into intervals. And then we can test the intervals to see if it gives us a true statement. And if it does, then we include that region uh, in our solution set. And if not, we exclude it. And so, um, well, let's just get on with it. And then I'll, I'll graph a couple uh, here at the end of these same two. We're going to do two. Uh, I think both of them are quadratics. Yeah, both of them are quadratics. Um, and then we'll graph those. And so what I want to start with is really just kind of set this up as if it is a equality, a y equals, if you will, and find the x-intercepts. So we might start then we would say x squared plus 5x. That's a squared. Let me write that a little better if I can. That's better. Plus 6 equals 20. And we're going to subtract 20 from both sides. And when we do, we're going to have then x squared plus 5x minus 14 equals 0. So we're finding the x-intercepts. We've set y equal to 0, if you will. Uh, and then we're going to factor this thing. So I'm going to draw myself two sets of parentheses right quick. i got a single x squared. So i got xx in the, in the parentheses on the left. My Constant is negative, which tells me I'm going to have to have a positive and a negative inside my parentheses. And then I need two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 14, but add to 5. And I think that negative 7, no, excuse me, positive 7, positive 7 and negative 2 should do the trick. Okay. Think about it. Positive 7x. Negative 2x. That's going to be 5x. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Let's set each factor equal to 0. And solve for this x-intercept. So I should have an x-intercept where x is equal to negative 7. And we should have another x-intercept where x is equal to to 2, adding 2 to both sides. Now, let's just kind of sketch a number line out here. And let's see, I'm going to put negative 7 here, and I'm going to put 2 here. This is where I'm anticipating that my um, x-intercepts are. And if you look at that, that has divided this number line, wavy number wavy line, uh, number line into three regions. And then I'm going to use a test interval to see if it gives me a true statement. So I want to test anything, and while I'm thinking about it, this is a less than, so I've got to be thinking about open docs, open docs. Let's do that, because that affects what the uh, line looks like on the graph. Uh, well, I want to pick some easy numbers. How about, ne how about negative 10? And I want to go back to my original inequality. So let's see, negative 10 squared is 100. Uh, and 5 times 10 is 50. So 150, 100 times, I mean, plus 50 plus 6, 156. Oh, that's negative 50, isn't it? Um, let me just do it up here so I don't get myself confused. So if I've got negative 10 squared, that's 100. And then 5 times negative 10 is negative 50 
plus 6. And I'm asking myself, is this going to give me a true statement that that's less than negative 20? I mean, it's less, less than 20, positive 20. Well, now 100 minus 50 is 50 plus 6. 56 is not less than 20, right? And so this is not in my solution set. Anything from negative 7 out to negative infinity in this particular case is not part of my solution. All right, now I need a number between negative 7 and 2. Well, how about 0? If I can use 0, I'm always going to use 0. Well, 0 squared is 0, and 5 times seven is five times 0 is 0, and 6. But is 6 less than 20? Well, 6, less, six is less than 20, so this is going to be, I'm going to put a check right there, so that's going to be part of my solution set. And let's see, I need a number greater than 2. Mm, I could pick anything greater than 2, but I, I think since I used 10 before, I'm going to use 10 again. Well, what's 10 squared? 100. And what's 5 times 100? Well, that's 50. And then I got plus 6. And I'm asking myself, is this less than 20? Well, 156 is not less than 20, so this is not part of my solution set. Now, I'm going to express my answer in interval notation. In other words, my solution is between negative, when x is negative 7, but not equal to negative 7, and when x is 2, but not equal to 2. So any number between those is part of my solution. So my solution then is negative 7, 2. Now, one thing before I go graph this, and I'm going to do one other uh, inequality before we go to the graph. Think about if I'm graphing this in the form of y equals or this zero, let's say that here, I've got to make sure that I flip that inequality around. So if I write that as a function, I'm going to actually say that y is greater than x squared plus 5x minus 14. And when I graph it, I just want to show you a trick or two, not really a trick, but some features there on your calculator that can help you with some of your solution sets. Let's go to another one. All right, this time I've got x minus 4 squared is greater than 4. So I'm going to set this up as an equality, but I think maybe the first thing I want to do before I even do that is square this x minus 4. So I'd say x minus 4 times x minus 4. Well, x times x is x squared. X times negative 4 is negative 4X. Negative 4 times X is negative 4X. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So now I've got X squared minus 8X plus 16, we're saying, is greater than 4. And then we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, set this up as an equality, if you will. And I've got X squared minus 8X Oh, that's 16. What am I doing? No wonder it doesn't look weird. 16, not 14. Uh, minus 4 is plus 12. There we go. Okay, now that looks right. And we're going to say that that's equal to 0. We're going to kind of solve it as an equality to find our x-intercepts and then draw our number line and determine our intervals back to our original equation. All right, well, let's factor x squared minus 8x plus 12. So I've got two sets of parentheses. I've got a single x squared, so I've got x and x. Now I've got a positive constant, but a negative middle term, which tells me that in my parentheses, I'm negative, negative. Because when I multiply two negatives together, I'm going to get a positive. When I add two negatives together, I'm going to get a negative number. So I need two numbers that are going to multiply to 12 and add to negative 8. And I think negative 6 and negative 2 is going to do the trick. And I could foil that back and prove that that's going to equal x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now let's set each factor equal to 0. And of course we're going to add 6 to both sides. So x is, we got an x-intercept at 6. And I've got another x-intercept at 2. All right, so let's draw us a little number line. 
And I'm going to put, uh, let's say we're going to put two right here and we're going to put six out here. Doesn't have to be to scale. I just want to visualize it. And again, I'm going to test the intervals to the original equation. So something less than two that I could test is zero, right? So let's see, if I put zero in for x minus four squared, well, zero minus four is negative four. And if I square that, that's 16. And is 16 greater than four? Yes, it is. So that's part of my solution set. And let's see, then I need a number between two and six. And I could pick any. Uh, again, I probably should put open dot, open dot right here. Just to clue me in that it's not going to be equal to that. And by the way, an interval notation, if I'm dealing with a less than or greater than, I'm going to use a parenthesis. But if it's a less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, I'm going to use a bracket. As to, so that it, that would indicate that that uh, integer is or number is included in the solution set. But let's say I need something between 2 and 6. Well, how about 4? All right, well, 4, if I substitute 4 in for x, 4 minus 4 is 0. And if I square 0, that's still 0. And then I ask myself, is 0 greater than 4? And, of course, that answer is no, it's not. Uh, then I'm going to test the third interval. And I need something greater than 6. And uh, I think I'm going to choose 8. You'll probably see why in a minute. So if I put substitute 8 for x, 8 minus 4, well, that's 4. And I square 4, that's 16. And is 16 greater than 4? Well, it is. And so my solution set then lies negative, I mean, 2 and less are not including 2. And then it's uh, 6 and greater, not including 6. And so my solution set's actually this. So these x values here can go all the way out to negative infinity past this 2. So I, then I've got negative infinity comma 2 and i'm going to use a parenthesis because we're dealing with it just a greater than so that covers this interval and then it's in union with because this is not included this is in union with six out to infinity all right, well, there we go. Now, let's go and graph these just very quickly, and um, you'll see how that shows up on our, how we can make that show up on actually the graph of the function itself. All right, I'm over here on my trusty TI-84 calculator, and I'm doing some inequality work, right? And so let's see. Well, probably the first thing I want to do, and I know my, pretty sure mine's already turned on. But I'm going to go to my apps, and you can see on, on my calculator, yours may be a little bit different. I got uh, numbers, my option seven is inequals. That's an inequalities app, and if you click on it, it'll bring up a screen and ask you to uh, press any key to continue. But then when you go into y equals, you see that you've got this x equals. Uh, you've got this quit, quit app, and that's to quit the inequalities app. But uh, let me clear out what's in there. But one of the things it allows me to do, and I can, if I go and highlight this and then hit enter, uh, I can then change that from an equal to an inequality. Now let's see, now remember we had zero is greater than, we started off with a less than, but if I want to graph this, I'm going to switch that sign. And so I want greater than, there we go. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay, and now I'm going to put in that function that we had, which was x squared plus 5x. And it was negative 14, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go take a, let me check my window right quick. Okay, that's okay. All right, and then you can see that it is shaded in a region. It also has a dashed line for the boundary of the inequality, if you look at that. And that's another nice feature about that inequality app, so it'll give you dashed and solid lines. But you can see here, let's see, out here to the uh, left, I got one, two, three, four, five, uh, at negative six, between negative six and two, between those values of x, I'm getting a 
shaded region, which is indicating that that is part of my solution set. Maybe right quick, I'm just going to go look at the graph, see what happens. I want to get out here past negative 6. Okay, it just graphs it as normal. I wasn't sure if it would give me errors or not. Now let's go graph that other one. And I'm going to just graph it kind of like it's shown. Let's see, I may need to change that inequality symbol. Let's see, I originally started at a greater than. So yeah, I need to change that to a less than. So I'm going to arrow down and I think I'll go back up. There's my less than. So I want to get and go okay here. Well, I went too far. Okay. So now I got y is less than. And let's clear our function. And I'm just going to put it in parentheses x minus 4 squared. Close it. Hit the square button. And let's see, that would then make that not positive 4, but negative 4 as I move that across the inequality. And let's see what our graph looks like now. All right, now you can see that it shaded it. It shaded everything from the 2 out to negative infinity, and it shaded everything from the 6 out to the infinity, out to infinity, indicating this is the region of my solution set. But between 2 and 6, that's not part of my solution. And so here's the interval, if you will. It's a check mark here. It's an X right here in the middle between, between the parabola, inside the parabola, and then again on the outside is part of my solution set. Uh, and if I don't get confused, I actually can use this graphing calculator to go a long way, but I don't want to give you too many tips. It's good to know how algebraically to solve it.